Welcome back, this is Reich. This was recorded mere seconds after the last episode, but this commentary itself is done days and days away later. And by that I mean like three or four, and it's probably gonna, I'm probably going to upload this as soon as I'm done here. So, I'm looking at the little cranky balloon shop, and all the other banana juice heart point things, and the parrot item also. I was wondering at this time whether or not the heart was like a permanent thing. I assumed it wasn't, but... So, Squawk helps you find puzzle pieces, which is super convenient if you're like a completionist. That's not me. I have this at the worst angle for commentating, but whatever. Um, so we're gonna play, obviously, because that's what you do at the treetop bop. I believe that's assonance. I said that when I recorded the video, but I do not remember, or, check, or I never actually checked out whether or not that's actually assonance. We got the fat fucking trees in the background. They're bulbous. And so, in this episode, I was like, yeah, come on, we're gonna be speedrunning as I stop to blow the Nandalion. But I try to use a lot more rolls for the sake of speed. We're gonna get that bounce combo, trying to get that one up from Mario style, even though that doesn't work here. And here's me trying to remember exactly, like, like I keep mix mixing up controls. And we get, gotta get that K, because, you know... I won't, I won't get, oh yeah, I thought it was kind of funny how I got that banana and then still, like, made it up. Yeah, this is actually the furthest I ever got in this game. Like, I put it down around here because I died a few too many times and I was like, fuck it. But, yeah, this is, yeah, I just, like, Diddy is my lord and savior and right already. <laughs> I just kind of threw him into whatever. Obviously, those are spikes. We want to stay away from spikes, so, as he's just humbling along. This is actually really hard to time, but I still got it and I felt really happy about that. Because I felt like I'm just super easy from getting hit. Considering like the time frame you have is not big, but once you can roll, you realize it's a lot easier. Still gotta blow on the day in the lions, because for some reason that's like obsessive. And here's where we bust out the Rambi. Using this game like other Donkey Kong countries. I forgot he couldn't jump on he can go on spikes at first, but we had to pop open Diddy. Just cause and I was like, oh yeah, that's a thing. And I busted open these blocks to find a puzzle piece, and I was like, alrighty, I'm not getting all these, but I'll get the ones that are in front of me. So as we bust and open banana coins, I'm trying to figure out how I can get up here. And I totally, like, didn't pay attention much to uh, the fact that those uh, platforms can be tilted left and right. And then I was like, oh, okay. So, Rambi round two, busting up everything. And I'm just gonna say fuck it and just go on the ground, because it's easier. And get the little hollowed out puzzle piece. And gotta get my boy Diddy, and I was like, oh yeah, these things tilt. Let's stand on the left part of it, right? Yeah, and then just slap that Rambi ass towards speed. And I was like, oh yeah, that thing's on fire. That's probably something we should avoid. But you know what? I'm back on Rambi again, so who cares? So here we are, hidden zone. I actually like these a lot. Uh, I wonder what the- oh yeah, this one. This one takes a lot of aiming. So like, I, I remember I go pretty close to the clock on this one. Uh, yeah. Like, I was so, like, waiting for the exact one. Like, I, I didn't always go for what was quick, because I just went, like, each time I got in a barrel, I decided what I wanted to do. So now I'm just gonna zipper it up. Or by zipper, I mean make, like, a half, kind of, like, polyhedronal thing. And yeah, 6.2. And I can't... Ugh. But... I'm, maybe I should not go for as many of these zones, just because, like, since I'm not getting all the puzzle pieces, like, I may not get any of them. And I totally, like, realized, like... Oh man, I could have bust this wall, and then I just bananas planting everywhere. And I tried to time it to see if I could get something that was like the one up, but I totally fucked that one up. And yeah, that's <coughs> I'm slightly sick. Um, that's that level. I get actually really far in this episode if I remember right. Um, well, yeah, you guys can see by the clock. And here I was like, oh fuck, what am I gonna do about unlocking that? Uh, maybe I'll come back to it in another episode. I'm probably just gonna like look it up. Considering this isn't the kind of game that I want to like spend a ton of time on. This is more of just a filler for me I mean, I probably could spend more time. Maybe that can't hurt So no Rambi, no running, but here we are just here we are. There we go Yeah, this is where there's gonna be a lot of uh, this is like barrel heavy and apparently that's there's just a safety barrel down there for people who hit a too quick I think that's a really neat design trick it makes people be like oh there's like as soon as it happened I was like oh shit I can't just be mashing A 
So, and I waited to make sure I would bop that thing head on, and I was like, oh yeah, you can't Invincible Dash, and I totally just like, slammed myself into oblivion. But it's Donkey Kong, you're supposed to do that a few times, but now I got no Diddy to back me up on my rolls, but, so, yeah, uh, I don't know why I took the time to kill one and then, like, individually walk over. I'm being super precarious? No, not precarious, super cautious. That's the word I was looking for. So yeah, we're just gonna be aiming the bananas, and this time I made sure to get the coin, because I was like, yeah, boy. And the drumming spiked rock, clearly creative uh, thread. And yeah, that was me trying to pick up the barrel, trying to remember how you pick it up. And got my boy Diddy again. Gotta get that O. I gotta move on to the new thing. I almost like slammed myself into the ground there. I remember that specifically, and I was like, oh, like, Jesus. So, oh god, this would be so much easier if I had live commentary, but sometimes just your microphone wants to be a piece of shit. And I was like, oh shit, I probably need Nitty. So, I can make sure you get him back, because I am not the most talented at this. And, yeah, there we go. Ooh. Yeah, I was super unsure about the perspective on that one, but, oh well, and yeah, everything from here, this is an extremely barrel heavy level. I never understood, like, the design, as I don't know how you get that puzzle piece, by the way. I don't understand the necessary, like, design aesthetic of Donkey Kong, like, it's supposed to be super platforming, and then you got these, like, action trigger sequences that are, like, just all, like, basically, like, quick time events in disguise. Like, you don't feel like it's a quick time event, but it basically is, because you gotta t just time a button press, and... Uh, I just think it's a really interesting concept. And yeah, we're just gonna go all the way through the floor, and by floor, I mean, this thing. And yeah, I totally slammed into that, but I didn't even recognize what was going on when I hit that. But yeah, we got almost all the letters, not a puzzle piece in sight. Ooh, so... Uh, I'm gonna move slightly closer to the mic. This is gonna be fun to edit all the volumes. So, here we are, the second to last level, and I see it's the crazy card, and I'm like, fuck, if I remember anything from Donkey Kong's countries of the past, this is going to be an absolute nightmare. And it isn't. Um, I can say that, but it was fun. I love these levels. Yeah, like, this is another weird thing about Donkey Kong Country. Instead of platforming, we just got this on-rails, like, jumper. Like, well, I guess it's platform. It's cart platforming really it's just like speed based instead of like character based i just think that's really interesting like mario games don't really have that such a dynamic shift in gameplay that much to my knowledge because it's always character driven i'm like yeah there's totally something over to the left and it's another bonus room so here we go like mega man like it switches it up with the bosses like being a much bigger focus but like it's never like fucking like Donkey Kong. Like Donkey Kong Country bosses, it's still like mostly just platforming Mario style bosses. And here I was like, oh god, I have to run all the way over to the other coin. This is gonna be annoying. And I just hit the ceiling. This is not gonna be good. And yeah, I was running out of time and just clocked it. And oh god, nope. That's. I, I remember when that happened. I was just like, are you fucking kidding me? I'm an idiot. Mm. So. Ooh. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to always gather my things, I'm trying to, like, pop down here. I believe this is just an alternate entryway towards the beginning, which you get shot into right here. Because you totally could have gone right, right? So here we are, carting around. I'm gonna start jumping right in the beginning just to get some, uh, time to get used to the jump arc. Which I feel like is a great design thing, and I thought, like, you totally jump higher automatically if you just hold down two. Apparently you don't. And that one enemy before there was a trap to try to get you to jump into the thing. And so here's me, like, just practicing getting up here. I didn't care for the, like, I knew it wanted me to get to the upper rail, but I was like, F that. But I gotta get the letter, because, because, and I didn't want to fuck up that jump with the puzzle piece. And so we got differing camera angles, closing it in on this. I keep ducking just to be like, oh man, yeah, just look at me, duckparade.usa. But the closing in on the angle, I think, actually makes this more interesting and way more intense, because you have to... Your reaction time to things becomes slightly less, so the intensity is there. And bananas, not bananas, balloons, god damn it, words that start with B. So, yeah, I have no idea how you get that end either without dying. And here's where I die, I think. Yeah, because uh, you can control your jump height, 
and or I don't know if you actually can, but you can time it to not jump straight into that. Like it's another one of those traps to catch you, like the entire time you're timing things as late as possible, and then you design an enemy where an enemy setup where if you go as late as possible, you get hoed. And yeah, see here I jump a bit earlier. Yeah, and the rest is just kind of whatever. But you gotta pay attention to the last one. I like I like the design on this these stages. Like I feel like I can feel I nearly died right there, but like I feel like you can feel the intent so, so much so more. And here it's like pretty much obvious it's about to end, and I just slam onto the rails, and yeah, no dunk, get on, get on, get on, and we did it, man, we did it, and five bananas to end it all. And this is where I was originally going to end the episode, but I was like, you know. Maybe this won't take too long. Let's try a boss. You guys deserve a longer episode. So, here's me fighting Mugly's Mound. Mugly's Mound. He's. I do like the sound design. I like a lot of things about this game. Like, obviously, there's some flaws with the touch controls being your role, but, like, there are some things that are just well executed in general in this. In Oh. So, clearly this, like, freakazoid animal thing, I don't even know what the fuck it's even trying to be, half rhinoceros beetle, like, but not a rhinoceros beetle, and so, mm, glorious hypnotism takes upon him once again with music notes, and now he, that makes him evolve to have spikes. So, this fight actually isn't that hard at all, I don't even think I die. Like, I just, here I tried to, kept trying to, like, be like, oh yeah, if you just mash one, you can pretend to, like, grab the air. So, I just do that a lot in the fight. And, oh yeah, and you can scuttle walk, like, just tapping. I like doing those kind of things sometimes. Oh god, yeah, so, yeah. And he even gives you a heart after hitting him enough to, like, do that. And, like, Jesus Christ, he just exploded, changed colors, and evolved to be stronger and faster. So, this clearly is a being... It just evolves beyond all comprehension. His spiral energy is out of control. So let's just walk under here and start pounding on him. And I almost get a double, but I'm like, nah, nah. And he just explodes again after two hits, apparently. So now he's redded and spotted and faster. And yeah, he's actually like um, quite a bit faster. He also gets a new attack, which we're about to see in a moment. But yeah, this is, yeah, this is me trying to go for a double. And I fucked it up. But, yeah, and this is, is, is this it? Yeah, here I was like, oh shit, what is this? And I didn't think he was gonna hit me with a shockwave. So things are coming down slightly to the wire, and by the wire I mean not at all. So yeah, he's dead. One face, two face, red face, blue face, and he's dead. So yeah, and that's the first boss. He has very rectangular teeth. And yeah, here's, you can see like the stars are a 2D effect going around the head. I thought that was interesting. And so here I was like, yeah, you know what time it is. We've got to beat the fuck out of him, but we've got to grab his tongue first. So this is something new in this game where it's just, you get the option to just mash as hard as you can to beat the fuck out of the, ma the boss. It's supposed to be satisfying. It really is. I gave it props on that. It's good design. Reminds me from, uh, I think it might have been borrowed from Donkey Kong Jungle Beat where I just know that you slam the fuck out of your enemy. That game was good. Awkward, but good. I like that game a lot. Especially considering it, they literally just had two buttons for controls and it annoyed the shit out of my parents. But, so yeah, DK, that's Mugly's Mountain. Am I getting a phone call? I am getting a phone call. I will see all of y'all next time.